Hello boys and girls, my name is Mr. Chanaka. I'll be I'll be guiding you through this uh, lesson. Uh, today we're going to talk about the computer numbering system, which is a data representation. We want to see exactly how data is uh, is represented inside a computer system. Uh, we have talked a little bit of this uh, on this chapter and we have done some calculations and I was not satisfied with uh, your performance but we're going to revisit it and uh, we're going to start with the long method then we're going to end up with the short method and at the end of the day you are going to choose whichever method you will, uh, you think is much flexible on your side so talking about the numbering system what are we talking about or what we want to talk about when you talk about the, the numbering system looking at here we're talking about the data representation let me just get my pen here so that i can uh, i can be writing what i want to sorry for calculations okay so we're actually talking about the data representation data when it's inside the computer we're going to use uh, for example a user is going to type on the keyboard is going to use a mouse and he enters data inside the computer but then the user is going to write hello but inside the computer the computer is going to represent that hello as binary numbers so we want to see exactly how the computer converts this word hello to these numbers here binary numbers then when the computer processes information again it's going to process and give out this kind of information but it's not going to show us the users these zeros and ones here because we are not going to understand the zeros and ones so what it does is going to convert again this binary data to our own language which is binary numbering system so let's start with the numbering system of computers but before we go into that let's define some of the most commonly used and most commonly confused words in the computer in the computer world okay let's start with the data what is data data these are the raw facts and figures about a particular operation it's meaningless actually so we're talking about numbers you just accumulated you've got numbers you've got letters you've got words you've got symbols but it's actually meaningless so this is what we call data it doesn't make any sense so usually when a user that's why you have data entries we have people who are there to enter data inside the computer it's meaningless it's not processed then we also have what we call analog data analog data is our everyday language such as sound light waves impulses on our skin etc so we're actually talking about anything you can hear anything you can feel that is what we call continuous transmission of data to our senses that's why i've got the senses of here how do we calculate if somebody is calling me it means that is analog data which is communicating with my brain and the voice which i am receiving so analog data is actually whatever we talk whatever we listen whatever sorry whatever we hear whatever we see that is what we call analog data so computers they don't use analog data they don't understand anything so we'll get up to the how the computer understands our language then we also have digital data digital data now is data which is represented in the form of zeros and ones the ones we call the binary data when data is inside the computer now it can be sorry it can be represented as zeros and ones then we have the other one which is information information now is processed data that can be communicated it's meaningful they've taken the computer has taken that one plus one and it has processed it it gave us a result which is two then it communicated that two using the output devices like the monitor like the printer and now we can see that meaningful data which has been processed because if the computer just takes out for example one then it takes out another symbol one one plus one it's meaningless you still have to process this so the computer is going to process this it's going to put an equal sign and it's going to put, it's going to put the result so this one now this is information it's meaningful and it can be communicated so let us not confuse that computers they don't store information but they only communicate information computers they store data exactly okay uh let me give a brief example we've got this uh boy here he wants to send information to his friend which 
who's on the other side and he is using a computer he wants to send an email for example to communicate with them okay he's going to use the input device like a keyboard he's going to write this information which is hello which are letters a to z okay he understands or we understand this analog data so this is what we call analog data but then he's introducing that data inside the computer the computer doesn't understand this information so this data here so what is it going to do it's going to convert analog data to digital data digital data is going to take it to zeros and ones after converting that to zeros and ones it now understands this information so this hello can be a series of zeros and ones so it can be like this imagine a computer communicating to you this information with the zeros and ones we will not understand the very same way it doesn't understand these letters from a to z okay so that information now is in digital form the symbol we can use to represent digital data is like this data is represented in this form digital data and analog data is represented in form in waves like this so that data is now being transmitted over the network or through that email and is going to reach the other computer the other computer still is going to understand the zeros and ones like this okay what is it going to do the computer it now has information from this other computer you have to communicate this information to the user so that we get the user gets what information okay so this computer now it's going to convert that information sorry that data it received is going to uh, convert it to back to analog because it take if it uh, communicates the zeros and ones this user is not going to understand anything so what it does it converts that digital data to analog data which is our everyday language okay the computer is going to turn on the monitor now it's going to display what hello if it is a if it is connected to a printer for example the user wants to print it's going to print what the word hello so that is information now it can be communicated to the user it's meaningful so this is how computers operate every day or every time you ask a computer to do to, to do a certain task it's going to perform this operation then if he wants to reply it means he's going to write his own text in analog then that analog data is going to be converted by the computer to digital so that it understands the instructions what you whatever you're writing whatever you're still sending it to do it's going to understand and it's going to process it in digital form then it's going to communicate in analog data exactly so computers for example data we talked about numbers 0 to 9 i didn't explain this part 0 to 9 it doesn't mean you're only looking at 0 up to 9 this number for example 235 this is a decimal number it's between 9 sorry 0 and 9 computers they don't read as 235 they read each digit digit by digit the one we call a what a bit we said computers they use zeros and ones so this one is a bit and this one is also what a bit a combination of these zeros and ones if they reach eight like one two three four five six seven eight we're going to call it a what a byte so my name for example my letter my first letter my name is watson the first letter is w so w can be represented like this eight characters the next letter is a it's another series of eight numbers so at the end you're going to multiply for example my name has got six letters times times eight so it's going to give you the number of binary numbers you're going to have so this is what uh, actually happens with the computer then uh, as actually saying it doesn't count as 235 but it reads as a digit so it's between 0 and 9 it's between 0 and 9 between 0 and 9 okay so let's move on to the conversion 
Okay, we want to see how to convert between a denary and a binary number. Okay, denary is analog data, or some they call it decimal. We use the decimal numbers. Any number which is between 1, sorry, 0 and 9 is called a denier number. And any number which is a 0 or a 1 is called a binary number. So this part is for the computer. For example, I want to write the PC. And this is us. We use the, sorry, we use the denier numbering system. So the denier numbering system is a numbering system which uses the base of 10. Where is this 10 coming from? Or where is the base of 10 coming from? We said we're talking about 0, 2, 9, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. These are binary numbers or decimal numbers. The everyday numbers we use. So if you count them, they are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So it gives us a base of what? 10. This is where we're getting the base of 10. So any number now, for example, if we are to convert or if you see a number with, a, for example, 22 and it has got a 10 below, it means it's a decimal number because it uses what? A base of 10. So each unit increases by the powers of 10, starting from 2, so starting from the right to the left okay we'll talk about that later then we have another numbering system which is the binary numbers the ones which are inside the computer now or what the computer understands it is a system of numbers with a base of two where is the two coming from we said binary numbers is a zero or a one so we've got one two these are the two numbers we are referring to so each unit increases by the powers of two starting from left to so starting from the right to, to the left. So we'll talk about that later. So actually, this is these are the two numbers or the most common numbers which uh, the computer uses and the ones we use. So we're going to be converting between these before we go into octal numbering system. Then we also have the hexadecimal hexa numbering system. So we'll talk about them later. But for the meantime, we're going to play around with these two bases here. So don't make a confusion. For example, you see this number 10. Don't leave it like this as it is. It can be a binary number, a 1 or a 0. Or it can be a decimal number because it's between 0 and 9. This is a 1, it's between 0 and 9. This is a 0 between 0 and 9. Or even this number 1, 1. It can be a binary number or it can be a decimal number. So how do we distinguish between these two numbers? The base is used to distinguish between the numbers. If it is a decimal number, this one, just make sure you put the base below. It should be a smaller 10, not the, the same size, but it should be a sour, what do you call this, a subscript below. So it shows that it's a decimal number, it's not a binary number. Then we have this 11. If it is a binary number, you have to represent it as with a 2 below. It means it's a binary number. It uses base 2. So it's no longer 11. It's no longer a decimal number, but it's a binary number. This one is not a binary number, but it's a decimal number. So please, on your answers, don't forget to put this base. If you forget the base, your answer is wrong. Because it might be a decimal number or it might be a binary number. Okay. Okay, let's move on to, to an exercise. Now, we want to see exactly how we can calculate or how we can convert the decimal so the decimal numbers yes you uh, can call it decimal i'm used to to use uh, i'm used to the word decimal than dinner but it's all the same you can use any of them is correct okay so we want to convert from decimal to binary or from dinner to binary we want to see when we introduce 5 inside of, when 5 goes inside the computer. Okay, we've got our computer here. The, the one we call the processor. Okay, this is the monitor. Okay, when you type on the keyboard 5, it goes inside the, how is it going to be processed? So we want to do that same exercise now. Okay, let's go to our board. I don't have a board here. 
so I have to open uh, my program which I'm going to be using as a board so the exercise what is it saying so it's a 5 so I'm going to convert the number 5 this is a decimal number don't forget you put a 10 below okay once the other number I'm going to put all of them on my board 10 got 10 13 125 10, 13, 125, got a 10, got a 13, got a 125, what's the other one? It's a 225. Okay, the other one is a 225. Okay, so these are all decimal numbers. You put a 10 below, put a 10 below. Okay, I'm writing them besides here because we need a... Uh, we, we need the results later. We need to prove if they are correct or wrong. Okay, so we, let's take the, the number 5. So we, first we have to divide now. When you're converting from decimal to binary, we divide. So we take the 5 here. This is a decimal number. We put the 10 below. We are going to divide by what? By the base of 2. Because we want to take it to a binary number. So you put a 2 here. 2 into 5 how many times it's twice remainder 1 don't forget the remainder is the most important part we need these remainders okay 2 into 2 is 1 remainder 0 2 into 1 it can't so you put a 0 let's go back to grade 1 grade 2 mathematics where you try to divide a number to say it can't yes we go back there so 2 into 1 it can't you put a 0 remainder what remainder this one here we didn't use it so we put it here remainder this number so make sure you divide your number until you get to a 0 before you get to a 0 continue dividing until you get to a 0 ok let's go to the answer the answer we read from bottom to top we only take the remainders the remainders they will make up the binary number so from bottom to top we got one zero one don't forget the the two which is base two so it means we now have a binary number if you don't put this two it means that it can be 101 it can be a decimal number so we don't want to assume make sure you put the two there so we now have a 101 which is binary number so let's put the answer here Okay, let's go to another example, 10. So we take, we divide the decimal number 10. Okay, let's put the 10 here. We divide it by what? By the base. 2 into 10. It goes 2 into 10, 5 times. Remainder what? 0. Okay, 2 into 5, it goes twice. Remainder what? 1. 2 into 2. It goes once, remainder what? Zero. Okay, two into one, it can't. So you put a zero, remainder what? This one, we didn't use it, we put it here. Okay, our answer. We read from bottom to, to top. Sorry, my mouse, I'm writing with the mouse. It's not quite easy writing with the mouse, but I'm going to do my best. Okay, so we count from bottom to top. So one, zero one zero this will be our answer so it should be a zero proper zero there we are decimal number two so we've got ten ten there so we've got ten ten this is base two which is binary let's go to number 13 uh, let's pick up number 13 okay let's divide it here okay the base which is two we're going to take uh, number 13, which is a base 10 number, a decimal number. So we're going to divide 2 into 13. It goes there 6 times, remainder 1. So don't forget the remainders. They are very, very important. 2 into 6, it goes 3 times, remainder 0. 2 into 3, that's 1, remainder 1. 2 into 1, it can't 0, remainder this one we didn't use it put it there what's our answer from bottom to top don't forget it's one one zero one base what 
two. There we are. Okay, so let's put the answer here. One, one, zero, one. Base two. Okay. Okay, let's pick up a bigger number, which is uh, 125. So I need some space here. I need to create some space. Okay, let me take off this number. Okay, get my pencil. So I'm going to take up the number 125. It is a decimal number. 125 is a decimal number. We divide it by the base, which is binary. We're taking it to binary. So we start 2 into... Okay. Now, here I will teach you how to simplify. In our examinations or any test, we are not allowed to use any calculators. So if you are not very good at mathematics, don't worry. I will teach you how to simplify the numbers. Don't use a calculator. You will be disqualified. So no matter how big the number is, we have to simplify. Because if you try to take 2 into 125, you are going to crack your head. And 125 is just a small number. In the examination, you can get bigger numbers. 3057. That's a bigger number. So you try to uh, to calculate 2 into 3057. It will take you a lot of time. So try to simplify. Okay. 2 into 12. Just forget about the 125. Ignore this part. 2 into 12. How many times does it go? The 6 times. So you put the 6 here. Remainder what? zero so let's put it here six two into twelve it goes how many times six remainder zero two into five now how many times three times remainder one you see now we have simplified the number don't take 125 as it is divide it here 12 then you divide it into five again okay we've got a bigger number again two 2 into 6. Don't take it as 63. 2 into 6. That's 3. Okay. 2 into 3. That's 1. Remainder. 1. Okay. What is it's getting low? Smaller. Okay. 2 into 3. That's 1. Remainder what? 1. 2 into 11. That's 5. Remainder what? 1. Okay, 2 into 15 is now small. I can take it inside now. 2 into 15, that's 7, remainder 1. 2 into 7, that's 3, remainder 1. 2 into 3, that's 1, remainder 1. 2 into 1, it can't put the 0. So I have to continue with the division line. 2 into 1, that's 0, remainder. This 1 we didn't use, you put it here. Okay. Our answer from bottom to top, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, or 1. So let's count the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Don't forget, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. What base? Base 2. Okay, let's put the answer here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So make sure you count them. It's better you behave like a kid counting them even counting your fingers as long as you get the correct answer that's the word that's what we want that's the base okay so we've got the answer for 125 divided by sorry into binary we've got the series of ones okay let's pick up another one let me create some space here okay i'll remove this number these numbers here Okay, the last one we have uh, 225. I hope we are together. We've got uh, a binary number which is 225. So it's a decimal number 225. We are going to take it to binary. So we show the base here. We divide by the base. Okay, some have asked why do we divide by 2? We are dividing by 2 because this is the binary base. Base 2, uh, so the binary numbers they work with are zeros and ones which is a 0 or 1, which are two numbers. That's why we are dividing by 2. So 2 into 2. Let's simplify the number again. 2 into 2, how many times? Once. Okay, 2 into 2 again, once. 2 into 5, how many times? Twice. Okay, let's write it properly. 2 into 2, okay, remainder, 1. Okay, 2 into 11, 
5 times the remainder what? 1. So we now have a 12 here. 2 into 12? 6. Remainder what? 0. Exactly. 2 into 5? That's 2. Remainder what? 1. We've got a 16 here. 2 into 16? We've got a 8. Remainder? 0. Okay. 2 into 2? 1. 2 into 8? That's 4. Remainder? 0. Okay, I'm taking every single step. But if you are good at your mathematics, do not worry. Just divide 2 into... Oh, half of this is 28, it's 14. Half of this is 7. Just continue. But this one is just to accompany those who are still having problems so that we go step by step together. Let's continue. 2 into 7. Sorry, 2 into 14. That's 7. Remainder, 0. 2 into 7. That's 3. Okay, let's put it this way. Two into, okay, let's write a couple. 2 into 7, that's 3, remainder, 1. Okay, 2 into 3, that's 1, remainder, 1. 2 into 1, it can't, you put a 0, remainder, this one we didn't use it yet. Okay, our answer from bottom to top. We count 1, 2, 3. What is this? It's a 0. Make sure you write nicely. Otherwise, I was... I thought it was a 1. Otherwise, you miss it here. It's, it's 2 into 14, that's 7. Made that 0. So it's correct. So count 1, 2, 3. So we've got 3 zeros. 1, 2, 3. How many is there? Sorry, 3 ones. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Don't know what a 1. To make sure. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So we now have a byte here. Okay. So put a 2. So we now have a byte. So our answer here to be 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1 to base 2. So these are the, these are our binary numbers. So this is what exactly happens when you introduce data inside a computer. You are, if you type 10 inside a computer, the computer is going to convert that 10 to this binary number if you type 125 on your computer even if it is money if you're going to type 125 meticage it's going to convert that 125 meticage for example into one 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 then that mt or mz mzm which is our current is going to convert it to again into binary numbers with their letters so it's going to convert them into binary numbers so it's not possible with a human eye to read the the, the language of a computer. If you could see it, it will be just a series of ones and zeros. Just like I showed you here on my slide here, this will be a series of ones and zeros. So this one, it can be my name. It can be just be written like this. Just Watson, it will be like this, my name. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, now uh, we've reached to the end. I want you to exercise, uh, I want you to practice uh, at home. I want you to do this homework. Uh, make sure you submit it. I'll put it in the classroom. Then the due date. Make sure you calculate each and every number here. These are decimal numbers. Okay, at times you won't find uh, a 10 below here. Why? Because it's here on top. Convert the decimal numbers to... Sorry, 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 sorry. Okay, this one should be to binary. The computer language make sure i convert it to binary not to decimal sorry for my error so it means that the question is here you convert the binary numbers to binary that's why we, that we i didn't put the the 10 here but make sure you put it on your on your homework when you're doing make sure you answer you also put the base for example if it is one zero you put a one zero then you put the base two Make sure you do the homework, make sure you practice, show every step. You can write it on paper, take a picture, then you send it to the Google Classroom. I will mark your work before we continue to the next step. In the next step, we're going to be converting from, from a binary to decimal. I want to see when the computer processes the information, how is it going to represent that data to us? Thank you very much. We'll continue in the next lesson.